Station Houston on two. We're ready for the event when you are. Okay, I'm ready. Right here. Okay, Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Station is ready for the event. Spaceref.com, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call Station for a voice check. Station, this is Spaceref.com. How do you hear me? I've got you loud and clear. How me? Perfect. Well, for my first question, Sonny, um, when I do these interviews, I usually get to the word expedition, since that is how all of your uh, trips up there have been described. And usually that word means going somewhere. But in the case of the station, it's more like an ocean-going expedition. You go in circles and you come back to where you started. So I guess it, it also has some attributes of being like a base camp. So your take on this whole thing of being on ex an expedition what are you accomplishing in a grander sense on this, and how does this enable future expeditions where we would go to places such as the asteroids or to Mars? Hey, Keith, that's a great question, and uh, you are right. We're, uh, a lot of people ask me, you know, where is the space station and where is it going? And it, it is orbiting the, the planet 16 times a day, and so we are living up here in microgravity. That allows us to do all sorts of science ex experiments that we cannot do on the ground. You know, on the ground we can have a couple seconds, 30 seconds of microgravity in a drop tower, but here you can test out all sorts of systems in their uh, completeness and their complexity while we're up here, you know, for example, we're doing a lot of experiments on ourselves. that's going to help understand what happens to humans when they're in space for a long time. We're doing material science, uh, combustion experiments, capillary flow experiments, all of that type of stuff helps us build better spacecraft. Um, we have engineering things that are going on, obviously. Uh, we're living up here in a, um, a hotel or a house, and so it has its own uh, parts and pieces that we're testing out for the very first time like how to process urine back into water um, and how that works and other types of engineering experiments that are going on up here, as well as um, AMS, which is outside, uh, you know, doing experiments on the uh, universe and also robotics and EVA. All of that stuff is needed and we need to test it out, understand it, figure it out before we can e ever venture to an asteroid, asteroid or onto Mars. A related question with regards to uh, exploration. In the cupola, there's a little plaque. It has four little moon rocks that were picked up by Neil Armstrong and a piece of the summit of Mount Everest picked up by another astronaut, Scott Parazinski. And in the National Cathedral, where well, there will be a service on Thursday for uh, Neil Armstrong, there's also a little moon rock in the window. How often do you all float by that plaque, and do you, you know, have any thoughts when you look down at the Earth or out at the moon? And also, given that Neil Armstrong and Sir Edmund Hillary were good friends later in life, what would you have to say if you were virtually participating in the memorial service on Thursday? Wow, that would be an amazing honor. Um, uh, I, don't, I think I'd be a little bit speechless, first and foremost. Um, you, you are right. Every time we go up to the cupola, you see that plaque there, and you think of what, the great things that humans can do. Um, when they work together and doing expeditions and exploring, I think is just in our human nature. I think Neil Armstrong, you know, really epitomized that as well as Scott, uh, for that matter, in his quest for Everest. Um, so, gosh, I don't know. I don't know what I would say except for, you know, exploration is in our hearts, and uh, both of those people definitely um, were are our role models. Okay, again, speaking of expeditions, you know, try as I might, when I've gone off on expeditions, I have a really hard time finding things, and like after two or three weeks, my tent's a mess. And I was just listening to Aaron Ground uh, just a few minutes ago where you were looking for something. And, you know, I look at the photos that come down, and some of the bags have barcodes. Some of them have handwritten labels in two or three different languages, and you can't see inside the bags. Is it my exaggeration, or do you guys spend a little bit too much time looking for stuff? And is there maybe one example, the most frustrating thing you've never found or you found later? Well, it's funny that you mention this. Um, 
Uh, one of the kids on a ham radio pass just asked me that the other day. What's the best thing and the worst thing about being in space? And of course, the best thing is floating. It's pretty awesome. But the worst thing about space is also stuff floating. And you're right. You can't just put something down because, you know, a couple seconds later, it's going to float away, sort of like this microphone. Um, and uh, just yesterday, I lost a, a bag of coffee if you can believe it. I just thought I Velcroed it down and then it was gone. Um, and so, but, but what hap typically happens is you find it not too long afterwards and you, you get to know the airflow patterns in the space station because air is flowing in and out of the vents and through the vestibules and so you sort of get an idea of where something is. But, you know, there's, there's times when things are Velcroed on and somebody comes by and kicks it with their foot, so of course it's going to float away. Um, and so you, you do spend a little bit of time looking for stuff, but we do have a really good inventory management system. It's gotten better and better, and, uh, you know, garbage in, garbage out. And every, all of us have been conscientious about it and trying to keep it up to date and up, and up to speed, and it's, it's really good. I was actually sort of surprised. This space station is huge, and uh, since I've been up here, I've really had a lot of luck finding anything that that I'm looking for, including all that stuff that we made those tools for the other day. Okay, I got to ask about Gorby. Uh, how's he doing? Uh, is he vacationing up at the Cape again? And do you have any uh, Gorby avatars up there with you? And I, I should also pass on that I just learned today that two uh, Gorby avatars are going to Antarctica. One's going to Lake Winterstay with Dale Anderson, and another one's going on a grand tour with Scott down to the South Pole. So have, are we going to see Gorby? Oh, yeah, Gorby's all around here. As a matter of fact, I do have something that actually went to on a couple expeditions, almost like those, uh, almost like that rock from Mount Everest. You might recognize this little picture right here, which uh, actually went to Mount Everest as well. Okay. And you might also recognize this little guy right here. Okay. He hangs out with me, and uh, speaking of getting lost, one time he flew out of my Cayuta, or my sleep station, and uh, he was lost for a little bit, but luckily he's, um, he's light enough that he got sucked into a fan, so I found him not too long after. Yes, I recognize the dog picture. Uh, uh, another question with regards to just finding stuff, uh, what's with the toothbrush contraption? That, that's got to join the Space Hacker Hall of Fame along with this fly swat and the hockey stick. Did this just occur to somebody? Was this one of these big things that a bunch of people at NASA had a meeting, or did you just get the duct tape and look for something and just sort of MacGyver it together? No, that that's our big team at NASA, not just uh, us guys up here. You know, we have uh, we do, of course, like you know, have supplies for uh, people to come up for a while and be able to live up here for a while. So we do have a little bit of a stash of toothbrushes and other things like that. But I, you know, that's just typical garage stuff when you're trying to uh, clean out a bolt or trying to retap a bolt. Uh, you don't want to damage anything, so you want to find something that's a little bit soft but it has a little bit of structure to it, so it could get inside of those grooves. And so I think. Uh, the typical, um, as I call them, you know, motorheads and uh, guys who work in the garage got together thinking about how we're going to fix this bolt in this housing. That just seemed natural and typical. Um, my husband has all these tools, in a, you know, from Craftsman in his garage, and uh, um, we, use, we do the same thing at home as we did out here uh, on the space station. You know, when there's something broken, we got to fix it, and sometimes you don't have the absolutely correct tool because you didn't plan on it, so you, you, you make do and you try to figure out how to, how to um, make sure the thing works. You know, and that's, that's typical of exploration. Sometimes you don't always, you can't carry all the things that you want to carry, and so you got to make do with what you have. Yeah, one last question. I noticed you had a can of authentic Bar Harbor Maine Lobster, and uh, you did not use the little bib. Now, was that can just up there, or did you have to special order that? Um, that was special ordered. It was a gift from home. I think you know I'm a I'm a New Englander. Um, lobster is one of my favorite foods in the world, and uh, my fa my parents and my sister know that. Um, I d it would be hard for me to go, you know, with months without having lobster, so uh, they made sure that there was some up here for me. And it was a nice celebration with all of us, the six of us, last weekend is probably our last free weekend um, with not, you know, not a lot of things going on. Uh, so we had a nice little party together, and uh, I got to share my lobster. Okay, thank you very much for, to you and to Gorby for the interview. Have a nice one. All right, Keith, thanks again. Great talking to you.
Station, this is Houston ACR. Thank you. That concludes the event. Thank you, Space Ref Com uh, Station. Please stand by while we reconfigure video and audio comms.